as I go out and around, people are still spending money. I, I I'm, I'm, for the, each each of the last four years, I feel poorer and poorer and poorer, and I'm just amazed that 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 people are still spending money. And you, and you really, I know, it is a problem. Like people are, are are really in trouble, but they're they're not behaving that way, which is the scary thing. We've had a lot of excitement in the silver and gold market. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Mr. Timothy Zub, a longtime supporter of Ron's Basement. He's our man north of the border in Canada. We're going to talk about the silver and gold price, and he's going to tell us about what he's seen going on in Canada in particular. Timothy, welcome to Ron's Basement. Well, thank you, Ron. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and I, have, and, I, and I have been a follower. I think I was one of the first few hundred. Yeah, you you absolutely were, Timothy. You've been been with us from the very beginning. <clears throat> and I have to comment on the Bears. Uh, Timothy even went is is uh, uh, out of his way to put some blindfolded Bears uh, in Canadian dollars. So thank you, Timothy. No problem. So what what's going on up in Canada? I know there's a lot going on in the mining sector. Uh, a lot going on politically. Uh, a lot of our viewers are here in the United States. And, you know, Canada is a, a, a obviously within close proximity. But, you know, what goes on in Canada affects the United States. Any any comments on those on those areas? So we're in Ontario, the uh, home of first mining. And uh, Ontario's had a fairly uh, mining and business friendly uh, provincial government for a little while now. And um, an encouraging thing that regarding the mining sector is recently as a, I think early in the spring, they 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 looked at the, uh, the things that are holding mining back, slowing them down and they did a refresh on some on the mining act and they got that passed. And what that's going to do is basically uh, allow the approval process to go through with less fingers in it and a little more streamlined. Um, so I think that over the, the next little while, as all these companies are lining up to get these projects moved ahead, they're going to have a lot less road uh, bumps in the road. Um, and, and also, um, you know, our federal government has not been so friendly and uh, been pretty antagonistic overall for most things uh, involving progress. So, you know, but right now it's really uh, exciting that the the opposition party is 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 doing really well in the polls beyond comprehension so and then not like in the u.s you know you have to wait your four years but uh, we have a minority government here in canada which means uh any kind of confidence vote can bring down the government at any time so we we will have an election in a couple of years but we could have one at any time and when we have an election cycle in Canada, it's not all it's not like the states where you have to you go through months and months and months like bang, the triggers pulled and like three months later you have a new prime minister. it's a, it's a pretty quick process. So uh, huh. yeah, we're uh, so we're I'm I'm involved in a lot of that stuff. Uh, so I get keep, keeping my finger on the pulse and I I try and build just like you've done. I tried to build a lot of bridges with the local politicians and uh, I luckily, luckily I have uh, some of them, I have their ear, which is great. So I get to send an email off and I get uh, responses. So trying to uh, get our, our, our view out there, you know, I mean, the Ron's basement crowd are pretty well informed and, mm -hmm. um, but we've got to figure out how to use this uh, knowledge we have and influence people who really, you know, even politicians who really don't know much about, uh, about economic stuff. And, and, and mining. So that's, uh, you said two things that were very interesting to me. I did not realize that uh, your system of government uh, facilitated uh, a, a situation where you, you know, I guess if there's enough votes and enough support that you can basically uh, call for a new election at any time. And uh, when that... you have a minority government, if you have a okay. majority, it's it's pretty uh, pretty routine. But we are in a minority government at the federal level. The provincial level mm -hmm. and, 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 and the provincial governments are quite uh, quite uh, strong in the their oversight of what they can do. So they are pretty autonomous uh, things. So um, it'd be it'd be nice to get them both aligned in the same direction. So so when you say a minority government on the federal level, explain that to me. Oh well, 
the 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 party didn't get enough seats to uh to have a majority so they they combine with a, a, another party and kind of have a coalition government and they call it okay. a minority so as soon as <laughs> someone ranks ranks or something uh yeah. you know just takes it over the edge it, it can it can fall it's they call it a a, a non-confidence vote on certain types of uh, bills and whatnot and then at that point uh, a call can be made uh, somebody breaks ranks a call can be made for a new vote for uh for a new prime minister is that that's correct well it's basically the moment there's a non-confidence vote it's the deal is done and a government's dissolved and it moves forward yeah wow interesting interesting you know the other thing you talked about was um you know canada has always been considered uh from my perspective to be one of the premier mining jurisdictions but specifically with ontario um, you mentioned this fact that there's been a kind of a refresh of the um, mining uh, regulations, I guess you might say, or maybe the permitting regulations to not make necessarily make it easier, but to make it um, uh, well, easier from the perspective of the amount of time and, and maybe more efficient for these mining companies to get permits. Is that is that an accurate statement? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's accurate. Yeah, it's just, you know, whenever there's the, the, we have the same kinds of things here and all the environmental we have in, a lot of indigenous uh, land issues. So um, and that's another good thing. The people that have the portfolios in the Ontario government with regard to mining and dealing with indigenous uh, peoples, they're, they're people that have grown up in that world and they, they just know it really well. And they've got the relationships and uh and uh, just things are getting better. So uh, they, you know, it's because so they have to do those sorts of things just like everywhere. But mm -hmm. I, I, I'm hopeful. <laughs> I think you know everybody wants to get their piece of a pie when there's a new mine coming up, and uh, that's how it goes. Sure, <laughs> sure. Now you are, and correct me if I'm wrong. You you live in the Toronto area. Is that is yeah, that nearby? Accurate? It's a very it's it's a we call it the GTA Greater Toronto Area, and it's. Uh, <laughs> It's a vast area all around Lake uh, Lake Ontario. Yeah, yeah. I was in Toronto, uh, gosh, maybe two months ago, and um, it's a massive city. Um, I didn't get to spend enough time there to get a real feel. So I'm going to ask you two questions uh, because it's a big, big city. Um, what's your feel in terms of the Canadian economy? Are people, you know, in the U.S., we've got the middle class that's shrinking. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder for families to make ends meet. Is what what's what's the situation in Canada? I'm absolutely amazed as I go out and around. People are still spending money. I, I I'm I'm for the, each each of the last four years, I feel poorer and poorer and poorer. And I'm just amazed that 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 people are still spending money. And you, and you really, I know. It is a problem. Like people are, are are really in trouble, but they're they're not behaving that way, which is the scary thing. I would say I, I would I would say the exact same thing. I would echo your sentiments exactly here in the states. You know, I drive down popular thoroughfares here in St. Louis, and St. Louis is a pretty big city. <laughs> Excuse me, and I wonder, and I drive by these restaurants after a restaurant that are just packed, and I'm like. And I know that to bring a family of four into Outback Steakhouse here in the United States, it's going to cost a hundred dollars. And I think, where are these people getting their money? Um, to, I guess maybe credit cards. Who knows? You know, I don't understand it. Like I, 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 I literally am not going to be doing those things anymore. I mean, I can cook really well. I can cook a steak better than the keg. <laughs> and, uh so you know what i'll go buy a 30 40 piece of meat as opposed to paying a couple hundred dollars to go and eat out yeah yeah well count me in next time i'm in toronto i'm in, next time I'm in, I'm in the gta area you're gonna get a you're gonna get a, a visit from ron's basement for one of those Absolutely. steaks <laughs> you can do one right here i'd be looking forward to it. i can broadcast from your basement and feel right at home with my blindfolded bears behind me right yeah. Ron's basement north yeah, Ron's basement north. I love Toronto. I have to say that, and 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 I will say this as well. This is not a uh, human relations show. It's a gold and silver show. But um, and I'm getting the same feeling with you. Canadian people are really very nice, very nice quality people, and I mean that from the bottom bottom of my heart. 
First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada, Springpole in Ontario and Duparquet, located in Quebec. Each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. I'm I like living here. I'm 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 passionate about making this place uh, a better place at every, every level of government. I'm I'll, I'm getting involved as much as I can. That that's great to hear, and we appreciate that because we know you're a uh, a big supporter of gold and silver. So let me ask you this question, Timothy. Uh, here in the U.S., I feel like I'm like one in a hundred, one in two hundred, uh, the, the a very small, you know, segment of a very small segment of the population that is interested in precious metals, interested in silver and gold. What's it like in in the in the GTA in the Greater Toronto area? Do you are you alone or are you everybody mostly, buys silver and gold? Mostly yeah. alone. You ever, you ever watched that movie yesterday? No, no. Oh, there's this great scene in the movie yesterday because the whole world doesn't know about the Beatles and he finally meets somebody that does. And it's like, it's like he's been out there and he finally is <laughs> meeting and he's expressing himself. I, it's like I've just found two people that speak my language, you know, that they have that history. But, and it's like that here. Um, however, I, you know, at work, there's a couple people and another friend of Ron's basement. And then we just bumped, stumbled into each other that we both uh, are very knowledgeable and, and passionate about silver and gold. And, uh, and, and it just like, what an amazing feeling. Like we are literally alone amongst like, yeah. I don't know, 1% of the population, if not even less, maybe point point one percent So uh, you know what? I, and I, and I don't even bother talking to people that, uh, you know, that I know it's not going to go anywhere, but I have, a, I have, at least I have a small cohort of people that I can get excited with and uh, <clears throat> talk about these things. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, uh, Timothy, um, I know that that can be frustrating because I live it myself as well. But the really cool thing about that is let's say we are one in a hundred people. Um, let's, let's say we were 50, let's say half the people were like us, you know, and right now we had 50 out of a hundred people. If we had 10 more out of a hundred join us, that would go from being 50 to 60, right? Which is what about a 20% increase. Um, the good thing about being one in a hundred is if we have 10 join us, that's what a, uh, a 1000% increase, right? Or a 10 times increase. So, you know, I know it can be frustrating, and and I and I live it here as well. I like to joke around that if I'm at, if I'm at my neighborhood swimming pool, and a neighbor comes up that I don't really care to speak with, I can just start talking about silver and gold, and then they they swim away. That's it. That's it. <laughs> they, they they swim away. So, what do you what do you see when we look out? Let's say just in the next twelve months. Um, as we're thinking about the precious metals, as we're thinking, I want to get a Canadian perspective. Um, what what do you see, let's say, geopolitically, politically, economically, and any thoughts on how that might affect the metals prices as we move into next year? Well, this is how I go about it. So all of us in Ron's basement, like we're consumers of, we've all listened to the same people, the same pundits on TV and on YouTube. And I gotta, we gotta come up with a way to process information. And I, I think I'm gonna try and separate that what I'm taking in by buckets. So there's the, you know, a lot of the times people are telling you things because they want you to think something and, and may not necessarily inform you about what's really going on. And I try and always discern that particular aspect of it, um, you know. But there's certain things we do know for a hundred percent irrefutably like for example uh silver consumption is going up right and no one's gonna blow us smoke up our uh behinds with that one with silver consumption is going up now i mean if the world stopped working that would go down but the reality is that's not likely to happen and the things that make it go up you know like you talk about the solar and you know and war isn't going to be going away. The, the, all, all these, all these munitions and all these weapons, they need. They're going to continue to get built, and we don't even know the, how much is being consumed to fulfill that. That's not going away. That's going to keep happening. 
and uh, the electronic side of things, that's going to keep happening. And we also know from you and everybody else that the, the production of it, even though they can produce more, that's going to be 10 years out because of the prices. It's not, and even if they've turned it on tomorrow, it's not going to catch up. And we're going to have, so we're going to have that. So that's a reality that's happening. But at the same time, you and I have lived it over the last three years. Um, we understand the impossibility of the, the prices being these lo this low. So we've all, we've all underestimated the ability of who's ever in control to keep their finger on, on these uh, and, and manipulate things in, to whatever degree. And we continuously have underestimated it. I don't think we should, even though the, every metric we look at to say that things are going to move forward and go ahead, I think we, could, we should still not forget the, the extreme nature of those who's ever doing that, that they, they are going to try and keep things under control. My hope is that, you know, we talked about holding that balloon under the water type thing with, with when we yeah. do this suppression. My hope is that whenever that pressure is released, it's done and not done all at once because we know how catastrophic that would be for, in a lot of ways. I, I would like to see a step ladder of, you know, maybe that's what we just lived through this last week. Maybe, maybe they'll the the people that, that are keeping it down are going to let it go up a little bit and let it sit here for a while, and then let it go up again and let it sit there. I mean, that'd be good, probably a better outcome for all of us because that way, you and I and everybody that have prepared and done things well uh, will be able to redistribute and, and, and make better choices about how we uh, re, re redistribute and invest our reinvest our profits as they come. Because I don't want to, I got too many eggs in one basket right now. And I kind of don't like that. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> you no, know, and we've, we've felt the pain of all those eggs in one basket. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I often tell people, <clears throat> I think it's, it's great to, um, and I'm prob probably guilty of this myself, that, that to, to kind of dream about, oh, silver could go to $80 an ounce, silver could go to $50 an ounce, but how important it is to really be honest with yourself and to have a plan of what you're going to do because, you know, we think, oh, it'll be great. Well, the the, the I, I've had stocks that have gone from uh, $25 a share to $80 a share, and it is great, but at the same time, it creates a certain level of stress because then you're you're in a position where you think, oh, I need to make a decision and what am I going to do? And if I think it, I think it's beneficial for people to kind of think it through that, you know, if, you know, think about the silver to gold ratio, think about what you might do. Uh, otherwise, it's easy to get swept away with emotion, um, as I can tell you from firsthand experience and maybe make decisions that aren't in your, your, your best long-term interest. Yeah. You know, it, there was a line I heard years ago, and I don't, I never forget it. And you know, we talk about one of one of the metrics we watch is the is the debt, that and the mm -hmm. debt is everywhere. There's no pockets of money anywhere in the world to uh, to assuage the debt that's that's that, that's that's accruing at uh, almost exponential rates right now. And then uh, so, some of them, you know what? If it's unsustainable, it will stop. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> You know, and that's just a mathematical fit reality. Or and uh, but the issue is we got a concern about how it's going to stop. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let me. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have to. The second time today, I've had the opportunity to share this with someone. I I heard this eight or nine years ago, and it stuck with me. I think I read it of all places in a Yahoo Finance chat room, and somebody put a quote in there, which was mathematics show no forgiveness on the altar of truth, right? That mathematically, you know, two plus two equals four in, in GTA, the greater Toronto area, two plus two equals four in my basement, Washington, DC, Buenos Aires, Argentina, you know, like math, the math behind what's going on is real. And eventually, you know, the, the market forces will prevail. I think it's, you know, I mean, it, 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 I was reading this morning, right? Like we're at this almost getting to the parabolic stage here in the U.S. with the debt. I mean, it's real. And, and the scary part is that there's pretty much no political will to even address the situation. The political will seems to be, oh, we need to spend more and more, borrow more and more. 
If you're looking to buy gold, silver, or platinum, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex, the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of Ron's Basement. I was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel. You'll find they have the best prices, quality, and service. I think Pimbex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's Basement. As I've been watching that, and then I hear all the pundits talk about... Uh you know, the Fed and the things they're doing to control inflation. I think that they have the motivation wrong. Like you and I both listened to Vince Lanchi and these other guys, and uh, their 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 goal is not to fix the economy. <laughs> their, yeah. their, their goal is to, pres so you, because you, none of that all fits all the things that are done. The goal of all the instruments they have in the economy are to preserve the, the status quo and the power. And I think to, uh, you know, to destabilize Europe and do other things, other, other, just to maintain their 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 presence and control of things. Uh, the economy is a way down the list. You know, they, mm -hmm. they don't they don't care if the economy gets blown up long as they, they, they have control of the reins. And yeah. uh, it's one of the other prisms I look through all the news that comes at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but to perpetuate the system um, or their status at almost any cost, you know, the the economy being an inflation, whatever, you know, I guess as long as they they can maintain their um, level of of uh, <laughs> what's the correct word, wealth or power, however you want to say it, that 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 it's okay. And and the convergence of at any cost if, for you guys in the states next year, <laughs> it's I, it's it's insane. Like you know, it's an election year, and and everybody wants everything to feel completely normal when everything else that's going on in the real world is opposite of that. So I yeah, don't yeah. No, I I point that out all the time. I, nobody's talking about it. Like we're 11 months away from what's going to be an absolute crazy election. And I think you were alluding to this, you know, the powers that be uh, will do whatever it takes to make everything seem OK. And, and, and it's interesting that when we had this big debt ceiling crisis, what, four or five months ago, uh, they needed to raise the debt ceiling that the decision was made, well, we won't raise it. We'll just suspend it altogether until early 2025. I mean, there's like an open checkbook right now in Washington, D.C. in terms of spending to a certain degree. There's no you know, legislative limit, I, I guess, at this point on how much they can spend. Yeah. And it's it's funny. Sometimes you'll hear the the news people talk about, well, they can't do that. That's the, the, the law doesn't allow that. We're already in a lawless society everywhere. If they want to yeah. do it, they'll just do it. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's, these barriers are uh, are full barriers. They're not real. Oh, I don't know how it feels in Canada, but um, I think you know. I know that I speak for a lot of you know. It, it, look, there's 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 Timothy Zub, there's Ron from Ron's basement, but we got this third person who's joining us right now, our viewer, right? And and I sense, and I think I'm accurate when I say this, that a lot of people are like really frustrated really angry uh, and I think also sad right like I, I'll be honest right like it kind of makes me sad that our that here in the United States that we've gotten to this point where um, it feels like and I want to get your perspective on this if, if if it feels this way or if you sense that some people feel this way in Canada but it feels like in like you know in the United States that that the country's been plundered a little bit over the last 10 or 20 years and uh and at the expense of to paint it with a broad brush, the everyday man and woman, the everyday, whether you want to say middle class, however, but that it, that, that, that this plundering has gone on and um, and the people that are really paying the price are the people, the the family that is uh, that has two kids and um, and the dad has to work 40 hours a week, the mom has to work 40 hours a week. And, uh, and the dad has to drive Ubers on the weekend uh, just to put food on the table and, and, and provide what they perceive as a decent life for their kids. Yeah. Plundered is a good word, but it's not just financially, it's spiritually and morally and in every other way. Yeah. I, I really can honestly say I haven't been the same since the COVID lockdowns. I, ha yeah. I haven't fully recovered from that. Yeah. They, yeah. They took a nod. 
I was a you know I was a gung ho in every direction, and I'm working hard to rebuild that in my character and in my myself. Yeah, 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 Daily. yeah. Well, you know, uh, we can be optimistic; things can change, and uh, I guess you know what we can hope for is that things change for us for the better. In the interim. You know, guys like you and I, I think, try to protect, you know, ourselves, our families, our loved ones, our friends. Uh, and, and 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 one of the ways we do it is with silver. I'm with me. It's silver and, and gold and, um, you know, hope for the best. But uh, I guess uh, we have to we have to ride the waves as they come at us. Right. Well, the thing that I try and do and I encourage everybody that I have influence over to do is, you know, I think to whatever degree some bad things are going to happen it's me and I'm very likely in 2024 and if we are the people who are really clear and and have the foresight of uh what's going to happen and the things that should be done and we were the ones we were those voices in the wilderness during this time when people are start when people get scared again and they're fearful I want enough of us to be around for the, say he was right all along. I'm going to go listen to him as opposed to the the guy that wants to exploit and take advantage of the fear. So yeah. that's kind of the one of my uh, my uh, marching orders that I go forward with. You know, with that, there's a biblical thing. The men of Issachar they understood the times that they were in, and uh, I want to be one of those types of people. Yeah. Well, I think I I'm speaking on behalf of everyone who's joining us today. Uh, I sense that you are one of those people. And I, I also sense that a lot of the other people, the basement dwellers and people that enjoy watching um, uh, Ron's basement videos are the same way, right? We're the people that that um, that want to understand to the best that to the best of our abilities, what is going on right now? Um, you know, sometimes I say, you know, and and I and I and I honor and salute people for this, like you're you know, willing to pull their head out of the sand and look around and say, what's really going on? Right? I mean, none of us knows for sure. Um, you know, and an, another analogy I like to use is like we're all kind of walking down this path together and we all have a flashlight and, you know, we're shining different way. We all see different things. Right. But if we if enough of our light comes together, we can. We can uh, maybe help navigate for ourselves and for other people that that road down the pathway. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Timothy, thank you. Uh, like I said, on behalf of everyone who's joining us today, I appreciate your support. This has been a great conversation. Can we look forward to doing this again sometime in uh, 2024? Anytime you have some questions about what's going on up here, we might have some, hopefully some good news up here in Canada. We'll see. Yeah. You're, you know, there was uh, the first M and A today. Van, uh, I am Gold took over Van Star last a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels it like two thousand. Yeah, well, it feels like two thousand twenty four is going to be a great year for the precious metals, and um, you know it can happen, but it's hard to imagine it being a more difficult year for the mining companies. <laughs> Although I would have said that last year right now, and I would have been wrong. Uh, but, you know, at some point, and it does feel like there's been a shift in uh, momentum and sentiment toward the junior mining companies. You know, I, I find it interesting. And I'll get I'll get your perspective on this as well before we, before we let go here. Uh, but it feels like to me that a lot of the junior miners that were needing to do financings in the last, let's say, four to eight weeks... I've noticed like major um, interest in oversubscription uh, like I've never seen before. And that's yeah. typically pretty big money, right? That that these guys are putting in 50, 100,000. Um, I know with First Mining Gold, uh, Keith Newmeyer chipped in over a million dollars in their most recent financing. And Dan Wilton, the CEO, I think over a half million. Uh, but I'm just seeing that across the board like this oversubscription, great deal of interest. And, and to me, that's, that can only be a good sign. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I don't begrudge any of them making a lot of money because we're going to be right going along for the ride. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. You know, they're, 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 uh, if they were a restaurant, we could say they're eating their own cooking, right? They're, you know, putting their, putting their money where their mouth is. Timothy, uh, have a great holiday. Thank you. Uh, you have been around the basement. 
uh, from its infancy. And uh, so, you know, on a personal level, also th thank you for your support. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you next year. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it.